welcome all right well hello and welcome welcome and hello today is thursday you guys which means that it is vlog day and yeah i got a vlog i got a pretty cool vlog planned out for you i'm gonna do that thing right now where i put all of the time stamps down here at the bottom so you can kind of see what's included what might be missing let me get out my vlog notes real fast i think i have all of the segments ready to go this week. We definitely have some news and advocacy. I definitely bought some beer. We do have a little bit of vape mail. Uh, I have a retro vaping segment prepared. We're gonna do getting to know Grim Green. We're gonna do some viewer mail. We're gonna do some juice. And then we're gonna do some favorite comments of the week. And that's it. And that's gonna be the whole vlog. So welcome, welcome to the vlog, everybody. Hope the office is looking, you know, a little bit better. Managed to hang some stuff. I got a Transformers the movie poster back there. And I think this is gonna be like my my vlog camera angle. I like it. I'm able to put my camera on my desk. I'm able to have pretty decent lighting. I'm able to have access to my, my desktop computer, which is important for reading news and things like that. And I like this little station. I got a little, I got a little video shooting station here set up that I'm really excited about. But anyway, welcome. Welcome to the vlog. Before we get too far into this vlog, I do want to do that thing that I like to do that's my new favorite thing where I hear from one of my subscribers. So right now, I I'd like to hear from Boris. Hello, Nick, this is Boris. Uh, I just wanted to quickly say thank you very much for everything that you do over there in the US, uh, especially with advocacy. Uh, we're a lot better over here in England. The TPD is not too bad. Um, but yeah, I want to say thank you for everything that you do and helping keeping people out of cigarettes. Uh, I also wanted to quickly shout out to a few shops here in London, which is the Great British Vape Shop in Holborn. Uh, Noble Vaping, which they just opened a new shop. And yeah, the question that I have for you is, apart from vaping, which is clearly your hobby and your job, uh, what other strange hobbies do you have? And yeah, thank you very much and keep on vaping. Yeah, absolutely, Boris. Thank you so much. And honestly, thank you so much for the kind words, Boris. I really appreciate it. You're absolutely right. Things are a little bit different. This is, a, this is a frequent topic of discussion in this vlog. Things are legislatively a lot different in the United States than they are in the UK, and we're gonna be talking about that in the news and advocacy segment this week as well. But yeah, absolutely. Boris, thank you for the kind words. You had two shops that you wanted to shout out, the, the great, British Great British Vape Shop. I should really write these things down. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna glance at the video one more time. Yes, the Great British Vape Shop and Noble Vaping. Boom. Boris has shouted you out, so you are absolutely shouted out. To get to your to get to your question, Boris, although I feel like this is a little bit of a getting to know Grim Green question, Boris. Maybe that's where I should have included this video but you said what what was the exact words you said strange hobbies apart from vaping which is clearly your hobby and your job, my job uh, what other strange hobbies do you have <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. strange hobbies that i have i don't know if i have really any uh strange hobbies i like to collect things i i used to really collect a lot of toys i i've believe it or not it's i know it's hard to think about that looking at the shelves behind me but i used to have a really intense massive intense toy collection uh, i was obsessed with buying transformers from all of the series i owned all of the beast wars transformer toys i owned all of the beast machines transformers toys i used to own every single simpsons toy that was ever released i had every figure and every playset and every variant of every figure and every playset and it was ridiculous. I spent hundreds and hundreds of dollars on Simpsons toys. As far as weird hobbies go, I don't know if it's a weird hobby, but I am a grown ass man that is more or less obsessed with Disneyland. I, I, I love it. I love Disneyland. I actually want to go to Disneyland and, and shoot some video, like shoot some vloggy type of videos at Disneyland just because I love it so much. I, I don't want to say it was one of the motivating factors in moving down to Southern California but proximity to Disneyland has always been an important thing in my life. I used to live 
eight hours away from Disneyland up in, uh, up in, you know, up in Northern California, up in Northern Nevada. And it would take, you know, going to Disneyland was like a vacation. Like you had to take a week off of work and you had to make this huge big road trip down. And then you go to Disneyland for a few days and then you come home and you go back to work. And now living in Southern California, I, uh, right now I was two hours away from Disneyland. And right now, depending on traffic in Los Angeles, I'm, I'm about an hour away from Disneyland, which is, uh, which is amazing. So if I guess if I had a weird hobby, helicopters, you you might hear helicopters. You might hear helicopters and you might hear occasional maybe some construction sounds, maybe some birds chirping in the background. I have this window, I have my sliding glass door open so that it will evacuate all of the vapor that's about to happen in here. But anyway, one of the perks, yes, of living in Southern California is being so close to Disneyland and if I guess I had a weird hobby, it would be it would be Disneyland. It would be wanting to constantly go to Disneyland if I had my way, uh, me and Casey Pickle would just be at Disneyland every weekend. I mean, every single weekend. Which I guess, yeah, that's kind of a weird hobby to have. But thank you, Boris. Thank you, Boris, for sending in that video. If anybody else has a video that they would like to see featured in this here vlog, you can send them on over to nick at grimgreen.com. Um, just mark it. That video thing, that one favorite thing that you like to do. I love hearing from my subscribers. If you have anybody that you'd like to shout out, whether it's your shops or your friends or your family, then absolutely send them on over to nick at grimgreen.com. Um, what a lot of people do, and this is I'm not coming down on anybody that's already sent me a video, but what a lot of people do is they want to do shout out videos for me. They want to say, I just want to shout you out, Grim Green, and for, for all the good stuff you do. And I say, thank you. I mean, thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. That's unbelievable. But I don't just want to show a bunch of videos of people shouting me out in my own video. You are, you've already clicked on to a video of me. You're already watching a Grim Green video. You don't need to hear more about Grim Green in a Grim Green video from someone else who's not in a Grim Green video. Does that make any sense at all? I'm just saying, I love, I, I, I look, I'm, I'm digging myself into a hole here. I, I love the praise. It, it, it hits me in my feels every single fucking time. But I would love to see less shout outs for me and more shout outs for other people, even other people in the community, other people in the industry, like I said, friends and family and shops like that. You're not gonna get into this vlog any quicker by just sucking up to me. There's no need to suck up to me. There's no need at all. So send those videos over, nick at grimgreen.com. That would be fantastic. And what I wanna do right now is just real quickly go over what I've been vaping. I did just move. I made a huge move up to LA. We've shot a little bit of video in this office and I've been fiddling around with vape stuff like you can't imagine. Cleaning stuff and, and setting stuff up and re-wicking stuff and new juices and new liquids and stuff like that. So there might be a few surprises in here and then there might not be a few surprises in here. And what we're starting off with is that Wake Mod Co. Littlefoot kit. It's just, it's just a, a, a damn convenient, reliable vape. The battery life is not amazing on it, but I just love having a vape like this around the house that I can just grab and I can just vape it. Even if my tank is this full, I know ah, I'm good for a little bit. I can grab this and I can vape it around my house and I can take it into the kitchen and I can vape it in the kitchen. I'm not gonna run out of juice and I've got an okay battery life. What I really like about this little foot kit, and this isn't a review for the little foot kit, but what I do really like about this little foot kit is it is a great going to run errands vape. Casey and I this last weekend, we went out for the first time like in on the weekend in LA and like tried to track down a, you know, the nearest target and tried to go to IKEA. We drove way up to this IKEA in Burbank that was the largest IKEA that I think I've ever seen in my life. This thing was unbelievable. But the point is the whole day we were out running errands and I had this. I had my Wake Mod Co Littlefoot kit with me and I was just just vaping it and vaping it and then uh, eventually at the end of the day the battery died and I was like well that's a bummer that the battery died I wish this little kit had a little bit better of a battery life but as far as like a going to run errands device this is great this is loaded up with that uh, bonanza juice from culinary confections it's a banana bread walnut juice that I just uh, I just love it I just adore it it's so delicious 
yeah, it's just it's just good and satisfying and reliable. Anyway, also been uh, hanging in there with that Equitas RDA, just having a great old time with it. Got a DHD Stay Gold nub tip on top, and this is on top of the Vapor Riz Vapor Vapor Rizzo Vapor Rizzo ME1 mechanical mod. This mechanical mod has a great backstory to it, and it is also an intensely expensive mechanical mod because kind of because of the great story behind it. So I'll try to do this real quickly, but Vaporizzo is a shop in Kent, uh, the UK, it's Kent and it's uh, Rochester. Rochester, Kent in the UK, and we went out to their shop and it's a cool, cool little shop. You guys saw it on video, it's a dope little shop. Well, these mech mods are manufactured underneath the shop by just an old dude who is like a retired machinist and he hand makes these mods one at a time which is why they have a really high asking price but that is also why they have an unbelievable fit and finish the button assembly is beautiful the travel of the button is beautiful and these mods are just machined just, I mean, stellar, stellar machining on these mech mods, which is why they have that real high ask in price. But it's a single 18650, like I said, Equitas on top, and I have a glass dripper bottle. Went on Amazon, but bought, bought a bunch of glass dripper bottles because the mech mod glass dripper bottle combo, bleh, just like that, it's my favorite. It's my favorite little combo. In fact, the ones that I bought off of Amazon, I'll try to track down a link and put them in the description. They're not childproof, so that's something to be really aware of. I am 100% for childproof bottles and caps and everything like that in, in the vape world. I think childproofing is should be a standard. But on the same side, I guess, of the same coin, I live child-free, so I don't need childproof bottles, childproof caps, on my bottles, I think they get in the way just a little bit. I much prefer non-childproof uh, bottles because I can just unscrew it and screw it back down and it's nice and secure and I don't have to like press it and have it go <laughs> click and you go, fuck, I wasn't pressing hard enough. Really like these bottles and they came with uh, little labels so I can write. This is Caramel Corpse, so I wrote Corpse Pentagram on there and it's kind of a, a cool matchy little bottle and this has, been, uh, this has been a great vape. This combo, I'm really enjoying it. Uh, I, I did do a review for the Equitas earlier this week and I think it's a great RDA and I'm keeping using it for a while. Great, it's a, it's a great vape. That battery is uh, <laughs> that battery is dying for sure. Next up after that, I got a new thing from Lost Vape. This is a DNA 250C. This is the Paranormal Dual 18650 DNA 250C, which I've been fiddling around with. It's weird. It's a little bit of a weird board. It doesn't, the interface doesn't feel like a DNA. It doesn't feel like a, like, like something from Evolve. It feels very clunky. The, the, whatever system, whatever operating system, interface system that they're using on the DNA 250C just feels overall real clunky, real clunky and real weird. It's the same way I felt about the DNA 75C as well, but that's neither here nor there. We're gonna have a review for this eventually at some point. Got it topped with the Zeus Dual RTA, which I have since re-wicked from the last time I wicked it. I've been using it. I set this up in that first video when I came up here to unload some stuff. I set this up and I knew at that time I didn't quite wick it correctly. It was giving me dry hits. I could take maybe two big pulls off of this and I knew that I'm like, oh, that third one, it's just going to be dry, so I'm not even going to bother. And I would have to wait for the juice to wick up. I took this completely apart. Uh, I glowed the coils. I re-wicked it better, I think. And now I can take a couple big, big toots in succession and it stays wicking. And then I posted that picture or posted that video on Instagram wherever of all the bubbles coming up. I love, love seeing the bubbles come up through the tank. I just love looking at them. They're just real hypnotic and they're just very reassuring bubbles. Those bubbles are just very reassuring to me. This is loaded up with a River Float from Bonsai Vapors. It is a 0.26 at 55 watts. I've been trying to fiddle around with that replay as well and in wattage mode. 
I don't really notice what the replay really is for. I'm just straight wattage mode. The mod itself without the replay feature should be giving me consistently 55 watts every time I vape it because it's an Evolve board and I expect more, I guess, from Evolve boards. So I'm not 100% sure what the replay feature is used for in straight wattage mode, but a lot of people tell me it works really well in straight wattage mode. So I'm gonna keep fiddling around with it anyway. Uh, open airflow on this Geek Vape Zeus Dual. Loving it. Loving this vape. Yeah, I definitely wicked it way better the second time. The, 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 the vapes that I take on this feel much more flavorful, much more saturated. When you get that good wicking down, it just it just feels good, man. Also been vaping that Signature Tips uh, SQ, that Grim Green edition. I traded doors with Josh in the UK. So he got my other Grim Green door and I took his black door. And the thing that I've realized is swapping doors on these isn't as easy as you would think. This door was not machined from this particular mod, from this particular billet of aluminum. So the fit and finish is very slightly differently off. This door holds on very secure, too secure. I need to have a tool to get in here to like pop this door off of here, but that's neither here nor there. This is topped with that Mike Vapes Recurve RDA, and I don't wanna get into it right now. I've got a lot of thoughts on this Recurve RDA. I'm gonna be reviewing this hopefully next week, and I don't wanna spoil the review, but uh, I'm having a very beautiful vape with it. This is just a single coil Fiends frame staple in here. This is loaded up with Poet, the sweet black tea, and it's been uh, it's been a, a squonky happy vape. Okay, I need to pick up the pace here. This is running way too long already. <laughs> I can just hear Dwayne making jokes constantly. That's like Dwayne's biggest running joke on me is up. Oh, Running a little too long. I can already tell. This vlog's running too long. I'm sorry. It's something I say a lot. I get really paranoid about my vlogs running long, but you, I mean, that's not news to anybody who's a regular vlog watcher. I always talk about the vlog running long. Anyway, second, nope, third to lastly, uh, Titan Box. Got out my Titan Box again, topped it with the Loop RDA, put a DHD tip on there, got a Culture Cloud sticker on the back, and this is the very last. This represents the very last of my Dragon Shake, but I I did a review for this earlier this week as well, and I dig it. I just dig the Loop RDA so much. It's just given me a fantastic vape. These batteries might not be at 100% in here, but eh, we'll see how it goes. No, those batteries were at 100%. I forgot that I changed them last night. Anyway, second to lastly, Ronin Competition Mech Mod. This is just one of my favorite mech mods. I just really, really intensely enjoy using this for a multitude of reasons. I did a review for it a few weeks ago. I think it's just a great mech mod. It's topped with that Gold Recoil Rebel RDA, and I got Pony on Acid in one of my non-childproof labeled uh, glass dripper bottles because mech mods and glass dripper bottles, bro, it's it's my fave. It's my fave way to vape. And I realize saying that, saying it's my fave way to vape, that sounds uh, really super douchey, but it really is. It's my favorite way to vape. That is a mech mod that needs a new battery. But still, still a good vape, even with a dying battery. And lastly, but certainly not leastly, that Omboyosi Rage Squonk box. This is still just the prototype. I don't have a finished version. I had a, I had a big long phone call conversation last night with Dwayne and I didn't even want to bring it up like, Hey, you know, I know you're real stressed out, but when those uh, box mods arrive from China, maybe I could uh, get one to put on my YouTube. So don't worry about it. We're going to have a video for this Rage Squonk box very, very, very soon. It, it's a banging dual 18650 squonker. This has um, Lick It from Smacks on the inside, and it's topped with that white recoil. I couldn't resist. I couldn't resist Coil Turd. Coil Turd sent me a pre-built, pre-loaded, painted white Recoil Rebel. I've got the nub tip adapter and then a white nub tip on top and IMO that is just that just looks 
so cool. And this is almost a Kent vape. This is a 0.13 at about 87 watts. So not quite, not full Kent mode, but it's kind of, it's kind of a Kenty-ish vape. Whatever it is, it's a fucking delicious vape. Love it. Dig it. I love this combo so, so much. Anyway, that is uh, what I have been vaping. So what we're going to do right now is jump straight into some news and advocacy. News and advocacy, yeah. Uh, so the first little bit of news that I had to talk about today, a fellow named Dexter sent me over an email. And this is some Hawaii news. This is a Hawaii call to action. He said, hello, Nick. You're sending this your way for this week's vlog. There's a CASA call to action out for it, which I always say this in every vlog, but just become a member of CASA. If you're not a member of CASA, it's free and easy to sign up and they send you calls to action that are relevant to the areas that you're living in. This is Hawaii. This is stop vaping taxes and an online sales ban. So SB 2654 in Hawaii would ban direct consumer, direct to consumer online or remote sales of all vapor and tobacco products. All online sales are getting banned in Hawaii, SB 2654. The new law would do this by requiring that remote sales only be conducted between licensed tobacco retailers, wholesales, and manufacturers. Additionally, by bringing vapor companies into the existing tobacco licensing regulations, Hawaii would be enacting a new tax on vapor products. This rate has yet to be determined. And it says this rate has yet to be determined, but I, I, there's a sneaking suspicion that it's going to be high. I've never seen any state or local government introduce a tax on vaping that is reasonable. In in Pennsylvania, they went straight for a 40 percent 40, 40 sales tax. In New Jersey, they're trying to get away with a seventy five percent sales tax. So I have a feeling they're not just going to introduce like a little ten percent sales tax on there, maybe even a little. 15% sales tax on there. Chances are it's going to be like 40% sales tax. I realize that's just speculating. And when you start speculating, you start going down a slippery slope. But this also goes on to say, please take action today by sending a message to committee members in both the House and Senate, urging them to reject SB 2654 with an effective date set in the year 3000? Oh, wow. It is really set. The effective date of this is the year 3000. Is that right? Is that true? It says with an effective date in the year 3000 and disagreement over the tax rate, the future of this legislation is uncertain. Contacting your lawmakers is important because they need to hear that voters also disagree with this proposal. So absolutely, I'm going to put a link down in the description to this particular call to action and also put a link down in the description to the actual bill because Dexter sent me the actual bill which if you've ever read an SB bill for the United States it's it's a lot it's a lot of it's a lot of weird terminology a lot of uh, you know uh, part two episode uh, part two or section two part a included e-liquid within the definition of a tobacco product is as used in the cigarette tax and tobacco act law thereby subjecting e-liquid to the excise tax on tobacco products it's a lot of it's a lot of stuff like that it's not very clear it's not very straightforward and unless you've read and understand a lot of these bills it's a little bit confusing but Dexter found it and sought it out and sent it to me so I'm going to put a link down to it in the description as well as a link to that Kasa Hawaii call to action Thank you. Thank you, Dexter, for sending that over my way. Oh, and I also, this isn't a news thing, but I had to do a birthday shout out and I, I wrote this down months ago and, and I completely forgot about it, but this was for April 10th, a fella in, in, in spring, Texas named Jacob had a birthday on, uh, on April 10th. April 10th, uh, it was his birthday. So Jacob, happy birthday to you. And I'm also not sure if I put this in a vlog before, but I'm gonna put a link down in the description. For some reason, this was in my news items file. And uh, there, there was a YouTuber named Who Wants My Pants? And uh, he edited together uh, the, Grim, <laughs> the Grim Green Burping compilation. And if that's something you feel like you'd wanted to see, I'll put a link to it down in the description below. It is super gross. It's 
it's gross. That's just burping, like burping constantly over and over and over again. It is gross, but it is also entertaining. So shout out to Who Wants My Pants. I'm going to put a link to that down in the description as well. Mostly so I can just delete that from my news items. I'm not sure what I was saving that for, but I figured I'd throw that out there now. And there was also an interesting tweet from uh, Dimitri, the vaping Greek, and I'm trying to find it. I thought I saved it last night. Turns out, no, I did not save it last night, and I don't know where it ended up. Oh, this is it. I think this is it. Oh, I think I found what I was looking for. God, that took me forever. I got, I, I just got really sidetracked looking at Twitter right now, and I apologize. But I think I found the tweet that I'm looking for, and fact, okay, here, we're gonna go back over here. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm really unprepared right now and I apologize. Yes, this was from Dimitri's, uh, this was from, this, there was two things, there was two things that Dimitri tw tweeted, and, and, and if you don't follow uh, Dimitri the Vaping Greek on Twitter, um, or follow me on Twitter, you can follow me on Twitter at Grim Green, but you can follow him on Twitter at Vaping Greek. He posts a lot of really great advocacy content. I find myself retweeting Dimitri's posts quite a bit. He's got a lot of really good news and advocacy content that goes out uh, on his Twitter. And he retweeted something the other day that says, how much does the FDA really do to promote public health? And this is a very, very critical article, very critical article of the FDA. And this comes from thehill.com. And this is an opinion piece. This is an opinion contribution. So the article starts off and it says, according to its mission statement, the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA is responsible for advancing public health by providing oversight to the drug development process. FDA has been tasked with helping to ensure that there are effective, safer, and more affordable health products in the American market, which helps individuals maintain and improve improve their health. And this article starts off by kind of being very critical of the way that the Food and Drug Administration has handled like the opioid crisis that's happening in America. They throw out numbers in this article like 11.5 million Americans misused prescription pills, creating $504 billion in economic costs. It says part of this problem can be traced back to the FDA and its lackluster approval process of prescription opioids, beginning with Oxycontin cotton, a time-released painkiller that contains a potential opiate oxycodone. And there was some weirdness around how the FDA actually approved the use of oxycotton and how there were no clinical trials involved with this regarding like the side effects of oxycotton and the potential for abuse. And so this whole thing is very, very critical of the FDA. So I'm just going to get into the very end of this article right here where it talks about vaping and it says uh, they're talking about, you know, the FDA and, uh, and vaping in the pre-market tobacco application. And it says in 2016, the FDA deemed these alternatives to tobacco cigarettes must be regulated under its authority. The and FDA has since treated them as though they are tobacco cigarettes. It says under the FDA rules, manufacturers must go through arduous, expensive, and unnecessary pre-market tobacco applications in order to submit a modified risk claim, a proclamation that e-cigarettes are less harmful than tobacco cigarettes. Manufacturers must provide all available evidence, a standard that's seemingly much higher than the one that was fulfilled when two studies provided to the FDA on Oxycontin tablets led to that that product's approval. They are essentially holding e-cigarettes, holding this to a higher regulatory standard than Oxycontin, which has the potential for abuse. I believe that's the point this person is trying to make when writing this study. It says multiple studies have already proven that e-cigarettes provide significant health gains. In 2015, Public Health England found e-cigarette use to be around 95% safer than smoking. This is the Public Health England Royal College of Physicians report that we love to throw out there. We love to quote it. This is one of the huge things that we stand behind. It's one of our big pieces of ammo in the fight to keep vaping safe, legal, and accessible for adults. The Tobacco Advisory Group of the Royal College of Physicians stated in 2016, health hazards from electronic cigarette use are, un are unlikely to exceed 5% of the harm from smoking tobacco in 2018. The American Cancer Society noted that based off of the currently available evidence used uh, using current generation e-cigarettes is less harmful than smoking cigarettes. That's what the American Cancer Society said in 2018. And like I said, this is a this is a very 
critical article of the FDA, and I really just want to read these last two paragraphs because they're so, so great. It says, despite the overwhelming evidence, FDA has yet to approve any modified risk tobacco products, effectively blocking any innovation in this growing and important market, which helps Americans improve their health. From its cheerleader stance on prescription opioids to its infaction on tobacco harm reduction, there is ample evidence showing FDA is not advancing public health successfully as in, and is in dire need of reform. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I think that's very cool. I'm very critical. I did the honky thing again. The, the, the weird clonky honk thing happened with my throat again. <laughs> I don't know why that happens. Honestly, I don't know why that happens. Anyway, yes, uh, I'm very critical of the FDA. We should be very critical of the FDA. What the FDA is doing makes no sense. T to a logical person, it makes no sense. Seeing their track record, seeing their history, and seeing how hard and how stringent and how arduous they've been on modified risk tobacco products, vapor products, tobacco harm reduction. The United States is one of the few countries, in fact, it's the only country I can think of off the top of my head that is so concerned with vaping, that is so concerned with flavors, that is so concerned with protecting the children. The government really feels like they need to protect the children, and what they're protecting the children from is a potentially life saving device for hundreds of thousands of adult smokers and that's just something man that's just something that is uh that's just something that's a real bummer and what i'm going to do is i'm going to link down in the description to this article where you can read it share it spread it around i think this is a great and very critical article of the fda but that's kind of uh that's kind of what i have for news uh now there's not uh, I, I didn't get to gather as much news as I wanted to. Next week, I want to talk about uh, the FDA going after flavors. The FDA is really going after Juul hard right now. In fact, I retweeted something from Juul Vapor, the official Juul Vapor Twitter. Preventing underage use of our products is a top priority. We hope to partner with those who want to prevent underage use of Juul and encourage people to reach out to us at youthprevention at Juul.com. They released a mission statement or they released a statement regarding this. Officially, Juul Juul Pax Labs. Juul Labs did not participate in the development or execution of the Truth Initiative study, and therefore we cannot comment on the findings. Juul Lab is fully committed to raising awareness of the dangers of nicotine use among adolescents. We are investigating significant. We are investing significantly to combat teenage use, and we welcome the opportunity to collaborate and engage with community leaders, parents, and teachers on education efforts. Juul Labs' mission is to eliminate cigarette smoking by offering existing adult smokers a true alternative to cigarettes, Juul is not intended for anyone else. We strongly condemn the use of our products by minors, and it is in fact illegal to sell our products to minors. No minor or non-nicotine user should be in possession of a Juul. In fact, we clearly state on our package labeling that Juul is for adult smokers and contains nicotine. Yes, absolutely. I feel like Juul is doing everything that they possibly can. They have literally the most adult-oriented branding out of any vapor product that is on the mass market. There's no cartoon characters, there's no googly eyes, there's no nothing, there's not even any bright colors on Juul packaging. It's unbelievable to me that uh, that Juul has to jump through all of these, uh, you know, court of public opinion hoops as well as like federal politician hoops in order to just keep their product on the market, their product which is helping, again, hundreds of thousands of current adult smokers stop using tobacco. Uh, I think that's ridiculous. Uh, you know, I, I support Juul. I support uh, their their underage, you know, uh, mission statement here. I absolutely agree with them. No minor or non-nicotine user should be in the possession of a Juul. That's just that's just the way it should be, and that's the way it is. It's already illegal to sell a jewel 
to a minor. And I think it's very interesting that it is illegal to sell a jewel to a minor. So when you go into a convenience store, when I used to live down in San Diego and we were right across the street from the little quick stop there, you go in there and they have e-cigs and they have tobacco. Now, if a kid went in there, I don't want to say kid, but if someone underage went in there and wanted to buy cigarettes and uh, that's illegal, right? And so if that convenience store gets caught selling cigarettes to a minors, it's the convenience convenience store that gets in trouble. It's the convenience store that gets fined. It's not Marlboro. It's not Altria. It's not Philip Morris that gets in trouble. It's the convenience store that is responsible for enforcing that law that you can't sell cigarettes to a minor. It should be no different for any vape-related product. If they, if that convenience store sells a jewel to a minor, it should not be jewel that is getting in trouble for that. It should not be jewel having to jump through all these hoops. It should be the convenience store. It should be the point of sale. That's where these laws are getting enforced. I worked at a 7-Eleven for a very short period of my life. It was about a year, but I did work at a 7-Eleven and it was a good, fun, convenience store type of experience. And there were, in my one year at the 7-Eleven, twice, two times, um, they had uh, local, I think it was local law enforcement, tried to send in uh, underage people to buy alcohol because we had, you know, huge, it's 7-Eleven, right? So we had a huge, huge beer section. I mean, unbelievable beer section. And they would send in underage kids to try to buy you know, six packs of beer. And it would always be like the most random beer ever. It was like Natty Ice. And so working at a convenience store, one of the first things they told me is card everyone. Just card everyone that comes in. I don't care if the guy looks like he's 50 years old, you card that person. Just get in the habit of carding everybody that comes in. And so people come in and they try to buy beer and I'm like, all right, can I see your ID? And they're like, oh, I left it in the car. And I'm like, okay, well, go get it and bring it back. I, when I was working at a 7-Eleven, I was rigid and unflinching in my carding. No one got past me. I carded everybody, and that's the way it should be. That's how you prevent minors from getting a jewel, not making the jewel corporation, jewel labs, jump through all these ridiculous political hoops. It's all, okay, I'm just repeating myself. I'm just repeating myself, but it's something that really gets stuck in my craw. Anyway, we're going to have a lot of news coming up. I think next week I want to talk more about flavors and I want to talk more about how hard the federal government is being on Juul. So cool. 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 All right. That's going to wrap up this news and advocacy segment. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get so ranty there on the Juul thing. It's just something that really upsets me. It's just something that really sticks in my craw, but I'm trying to be more positive. In the last vlog, I rewatched it. You know, I rewatched some of my old vlogs just to, you know, uh, see things. I want to see how things turn out. I want to see how, how the sound is. I want to see how my lighting is. I want to see how things like that are. And so, you know, it's like, uh, I get, you know, it's like a, it's like a football player watching their, watching their big game, you know, and seeing what they did wrong and seeing how they could improve their shit. That's kind of what I do. I kind of I kind of evaluate myself and I kind of see how I can improve my shit. And I noticed throughout the whole last vlog that I shot in this office, it was a lot of like really downer stuff. And I don't know if I was just bummed out or if I was in a bummed mood or if I was just too stressed from moving or anything like that, but it got really like everything sucked. All Everything was like, meh, 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 meh. These Segelis, meh. They put me in a bad mood. Meh. This juice tasting, meh. I don't like it. Uh, everything's uh, negative. <laughs> and I really don't want to be like that really pessimistic negative person. I'm an optimist. I do believe that people have the potential to do overwhelmingly good things and I'm an eternal optimist and so that's what I'm going to try to be is an eternal uh, optimist or go back to being more of an optimistic person instead of such a pessimistic person it's just it's just difficult when it seems like the entire United States and every government and the FDA and every state and local government is against you and you believe in what you're doing I believe so hard that vaping is going to change the world it's frustrating when other people people more important, people in political positions and powerful positions don't see that. It makes you 
it just makes me crazy. It just makes me so, so frustrated. Anyway, I'm sorry. See, I made this even longer by going on yet another rant. Anyway, we're going to wrap up this news and advocacy thing. Let me take a quick look at my vlog schedule and see what we're going to do right now. We are going to have to get into a time machine because it's 11 a.m. and I'm not quite ready for a beer. So we're just going to have to jump in a time machine right now. But right now we're going to taste a beer. Okay, well, we didn't go that far in a time machine. We only went maybe three or four hours ahead. It's 4.30 in the afternoon here, and I was getting down. I was sitting down to have a beer. I had a beer ready to go, and then and then I got scared, you guys. I'm kind of chickening out of this right now because there's been a lot of stuff going around on social media just today, just between when I started this vlog and right now. People have been tagging me in things, attention, YouTube, attention YouTubers, attention vape YouTubers, uh, and I believe this started. The first person that told me about this was Red Fox Vapes. Um, she posted on Instagram and it said, hey, content creators, keep an eye on your channel today. Three channels have been shut down for using threatening language in the title, even though it was only a name of the product they were reviewing. They are only giving one strike for this and then taking your channel. As a whole, stay safe, vape fam. Guard your channels, save your videos, have a backup, ready to go. I have no backup ready to go. If I lost this YouTube channel, that would be fairly detrimental to everything that I'm doing right now. So I really would rather not lose my YouTube channel, A, or B, have any strikes against my channel. I have zero strikes against my channel, and that's a very good feeling, and I want to try to keep it that way. And it's not so much that that scared me, but I saw another one that said, attention YouTube vape reviewers. YouTube is terminating the accounts of reviewers mentioning any CBD products, and specifically the brand hemp bombs and say that quietly so YouTube doesn't hear me. But this particular brand, if it's in their title or in their captions, they are getting their channels taken down. They are also sending strikes to channels regarding drinking and drug use. And while there is no drug use on this channel, I mean, other than nicotine, there's no drug use on this channel. There is sometimes some drinking on this channel. There is sometimes really, really often a beer tasting on this channel. And, and, and I apologize, but I'm just going to have to play it safe this week. I really am protective of my YouTube. I'm, it's been it's been going for nine years now. I've got over a thousand videos, some ridiculous amount of subscribers. And so I'm really trying to be protective of that. I don't want any strikes and, and I don't want my YouTube taken down completely. So until I can look into this a little bit more and see really what's going on to see if there's any truth to any of this, maybe I'm just being overly paranoid or overly cautious, but I'm going to omit the beer tasting segment from this particular vlog, just just this vlog for today. Like I said, I'd like to get some more information about this. If anybody has any info, leave it down in the comments below. I don't know what's going on YouTube. Uh, I don't know what's going on with YouTube. If anybody has any information, like I said, leave it in a comment below or email it over to me, nick at grimgreen.com, so I can kind of figure out what's going on in here. I just want my vlog to be a safe place for vaping, for beer, and for things that aren't going to cause strikes against my channel or cause my channel to get terminated. I love beer. Don't get me wrong. I love beer and I love the beer tastings, but I don't want to do anything right now to possibly jeopardize my channel. This kind of just popped up today. It says three channels have been shut down for using threatening language in the title by throwing hemp bomb into their title of the video. And I know that I'm not doing that. And I know that I'm not even putting beer in the title of my video, but it's still... God, it still just makes me really very nervous. Losing my YouTube, which I doubt that that's gonna happen. I realize that that's an outlier. I realize that's a remote possibility of that happening, but losing my YouTube right now would severely uh, throw a wrench into my entire life. So in the interest of keeping my YouTube up and running and accessible to everybody, we're just gonna skip cap, skip 
past this beer section just this week. It's no big deal. It'll probably come back next week. Just need some more information about what's going on with YouTube. And I don't want to take this time to go on a big YouTube rant, but YouTube is making it more difficult and more difficult for content creators to put out their content. And it's not just affecting vape YouTubers. It's affecting cannabis YouTubers. It's affecting big YouTubers. It's affecting fucking Philip DeFranco, for God's sake. Hopefully YouTube gets their act together, and hopefully we can continue having beer tastings in this vlog because I love it so much. But anyway, that's where I'm going to leave that so right now uh, oh there was a burp there i promise i wasn't just faking a burp to try to look cool <laughs> who fakes a burp to try to look cool <laughs> anyway what we're gonna do is we're gonna skip this beer segment right now and we're gonna jump straight into vape mail All right, well, I'm just going to turn my chair to the side here, and we're going to open some vape mail. I do have some vape mail. These are uh, Febreze scented garbage bags. They're still pretty good. They're not. They're not vanilla. Next next trip to the store, we're getting vanilla again. I'm sick of I'm sick of settling for Febreze when we're, what I really want is vanilla. <laughs> but anyway, I do have some vape mail here. Not a ton. And look, before we get into this vape mail, I just want to say um, I did just move, and getting all of your packages to your new residence is difficult. I receive a stupid amount of packages. I mean, stupid amount of packages. There are vendors in China that just have my address and will just send me stuff without warning. So reaching out to individually to all of these people and giving them my new address and then still having packages go to my old address and then have to get rerouted here, it's gonna be it's gonna be a little bit of a rough transition process for me to get all of my vape mail. So I have a feeling there's a lot of like, I have a burp coming as well. I can sense it. I'm gonna try to edit it out. Yeah, see, mission accomplished. But I have a feeling there's a lot of like, cool products coming out that I'm just not going to have right away. Just because there's some stuff that went to my old place, there's some stuff that's coming here, there's some stuff that's just kind of getting lost along the way. I've also been one of these people that's never really concerned with being first. I don't have to be first. I don't have to be the first person with an Equitas RDA review. The only thing I have to do is make sure that I have a good Equitas review. I want I want to use these products for a while before I put them on video. That's just the way I've always been. So we might be getting some cool stuff a little bit later on. I just want to make sure that I get to spend enough time with it before it gets onto YouTube, if if that makes sense. But let's dive in. I got a little pile right here. We're going to dive in. Now, this is the one that just arrived, and I believe this is Cotton. This is uh, Cotton from Apaca. Apaca. If you don't follow him on Instagram, you definitely should. He does these beautiful hand-carved like mods. They're amazing. They're unbelievable. It's my dream one day to have my own Apaca mod, but they are expensive and they are just beautiful. I'll put a link down in the description to where you can follow him on Instagram, but his mods are beautiful. And he hit me up about trying out this cotton. Oh yeah, he just sent over some cotton. So this is called Swag Cotton Fiber. It's always interesting to see new cotton. There's a lot of cotton out there that I really like. I used to really love the Cloud Kicker Society pre-stripped cotton. Oh my God, it was my favorite cotton. I also really like those thirsty wicks. I'm not a huge fan of cotton bacon, although I hear the newer versions of cotton bacon are much better. And so, sure, why not? I'll always try out a new cotton, and this cotton is called Swag. Oh, and it is very, very fluffy. Oh, it's very fibrous. Celtic cotton, that's the one I also really love. This kind of reminds me of uh, of the Native Wix Platinum, which is a cotton that I really enjoyed. Well, wow, cool, there you go. All right, some cotton. I'm gonna try out some cotton. What does it say here? Handles high temperature, less dry hits, no more burnt cotton, which causes dry hits, 100% organic, made from organic cotton, no nylon, acrylica, acrylic, or silica content, acrylica. Just invented a, a new molecule. <sighs> Acrylica, good job. Acrylic or silica content, no bleaching, no odors, no chemicals, washable, wash and reuse. Now, I have never 
in, in the history of vaping, reused cotton. Cotton always gets thrown in the trash when I'm re-wicking. I've never reused cotton. Apparently, this you can re-wash. Does anybody, does anybody wash, like rinse out their cotton and reuse it ever? I'd be really interested to hear if anybody actually does that. So, let's see what we got from DHL. Oh, there's a snapback on top. That means I get to wear a new snapback. At least in the vlog, it's gonna be a smashed snapback. Oh, it's not even a snapback. Oh, no, no, vape fly. I'm never going to wear this hat. Looking good in the vape fly, like really bent bill. And it's got one of those like, uh, you know, buckles on the back there. I could wear it like this and have one of those buckles hanging off. Anyway, I don't know. I don't care. I'm going to keep it on. All right. Uh, so here we have, uh, please note that this is a sample product and the final product may differ from it. What's the name of the device? The vape fly wormhole RDA price $35.99. Are there any specific specific speaking points you'd like mentioned in the review. Side and below airflow, large airflow, multiple airflow for controlling single and dual coil, inner airflow, adjusting clamps, squonk BF available, deep juice well, 810 compatible. All right, let's take a look at this thing. So this is the Vapefly Wormhole RDA. Okay, this is the stainless steel Wormhole RDA. Uh, and see, even reviewing things like the Vapefly Gap Galaxy's mouth to lung RDA or the Geek Vape. What was the the one the Berserker mouth to lung RDA? The Berserker mouth to lung RDA is a great RDA. It just hasn't hasn't got a review from me yet because of the move. So it's something I might be reviewing a little bit later on. Oh my gosh, that's so much better. Anyway, here we go. Vape fly. Let's look at this thing. This is a Ain't that a thing. This is the wormhole, wormhole RDA. It's got some crazy airflow along the side. It's got like, looks like clear Ultem across the top there. Some more crazy ass airflow. Some more weird fucking crazy ass airflow. It just, it just looks ridiculous. It looks like overkill. It looks like they over-engineered the airflow on this like crazy. Do I have anything I can attach this to and see the deck on it? Okay, so this top part spins independently. Oh, there's, why is there so many airflows? Okay, well that's the deck. Let's take a look at the deck real fast. It's got airflow that comes through the center post, but why? There's the deck. It's kind of a crazy looking deck. And then you got this huge airflow opening right there. And that airflow comes out of these holes on the center of the deck right there. You see those like those three holes right there? That's where the airflow from this is going. I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know why that exists. Okay, so that's the airflow for the center. And then you have more airflow over here that points at your coils. Then you have airflow over here that points to your coils. And then you have airflow over here that points at your posts. I think that's for a single coil setup. I think they wanted you to have both airflow, both side and bottom airflow, no matter whether you were doing single or dual coils. I think that's why this looks so goddamned confusing. Because when you get that little, uh, when you get that AFC adjustment on there, you can adjust those, and then these over here are covered up. So I feel like this is your single coil option, and then this is your dual coil option. Fuck, that's weird. And there's five airflow holes across the top here, but the way this cap is, you can only open one, you can only open two of them at a time, maybe three of them at a time. That's, uh, that's really kind of weird too. I mean, the airflow feels fine. It feels nice and smooth. It feels like, you know, good, smooth airflow on an RDA. I am terribly fascinated by this. Well, shit, this might be something that, uh, this might be something I build. This might be something I put a build in in this here vlog. I'm gonna put you in the, I might put you together in this vlog. I might throw a quick build on there and just see how that vapes with that fucking weird vape fly wormhole. And then I got, uh, you know, another 800 pack of uh, Chinese coils that I'm not ever a, a huge, fan of. I've installed these plenty of times on plenty of atomizers and they always work fine. They work just fine. But there's some coils in here like the Hive coil, like the Tiger coil that I don't care. I don't I don't like those. I don't like 
twisted ribbon wire over like a like a you know a 28 gauge core. It's just weird. These are just weird coils sometimes. Here you go, vape fly. All right, I'm gonna break down my box now. I'm trying to clean as I go instead of just getting to the end of the vape mail and just having garbage, you know, fucking everywhere. Ooh, uh oh, look at this. Ooh, look how controversial this is. A Vupu package. Uh oh, and this is the U Force. T1, U-Force T1 sub -ohm tank, cool. I, I, I genuinely enjoy the U-Force tanks. The first U-Force tank felt a little flimsy and, and, and uh, I don't know, it felt real junky to me, but I loved the coil heads on the inside. It looks like they've done a complete 360 and made this the thickest, most like knurled, tough, angry looking sub ohm tank ever that's so got this like heavy heavy knurling across the bottom heavy knurling across the top this drip tip does not match in any capacity this is like a a blue and purple drip tip on top of like a red and black tank i'm interested to see how you fill this how did the vupu how did the u-force tank open yeah just like that slides open Boom, fill it, boom, close it, boom, drip tip. Shit, I don't know. I kind of also want to set this up because I like the U-Force tank so much. I like the coil heads so much, and they are still using round wire. I don't know. You're not going to be able to see down in there. It's not a mesh coil head. It's still a round wire coil head, which is interesting. The original Vupu U-Force tank was also a round wire coil coil head that I thought performed just as good, if not even a little bit better than a mesh coil head. And I love mesh coil heads. I love that Freemax Fire Luke mesh. Was that the Freemax Fire Luke mesh? What was the other mesh coil head tank that I was using? The one from uh, Vapeston. Oh my God, I can't believe I can't remember the name of this. But it was also a really good sub ohm tank and it used mesh coil heads as well. This uses round wire. So I'm interested to see how these coil heads work. And I have a second one that is in this sort of, uh, you know, that color finish that sort of uh you know brushed type of looking finish which means you know it's gonna go in for the two dollar sales all right cool well we got the vupu u-force t1 i genuinely kind of want to set that up as well i'll probably do the vape fly one i'll probably do the vape fly and it's and, and it's just because i feel guilty for vape fly i shouldn't feel guilty but i do feel guilty they sent me the galaxy's mouth to lung rda which i still have not even set up yet because instagram voted to set up the berserker instead of the galaxies so i set up the berserker and started using the berserker right away didn't even give the galaxies a try so i figure let's set up that uh let's set up that real fast not yet not until we get you know not until we get to the end of the vape mail and this right here comes from atom vapes which uh i don't I don't remember. I don't recognize. I don't remember the name. I don't recognize the name. I have a really terribly bad memory when think with things like this. I don't know if this is a mod or juice or what. This is the Atom Vapes Specimen. Atom Vapes Specimen Review Pack. We'd love to get your feedback and see what you think of our latest prototype. We're in the R&D stages and we would love your feedback. Designed and engineered in the United Kingdom. Oh, dang. Is this like a top secret thing that maybe I shouldn't be putting on YouTube? Oh, snap and a half. This is a bitchin' looking black Cerakoted mech mod. Is that 22? Two millimeters? That can't be right. Okay, no, it's 24. Okay, that's 24. That's a 24 millimeter atomizer, and honestly, that recurve RDA looks fucking cool on this mech. Oh, this is the Nord RDA. Oh, baby. I have been waiting to try the fuck out of this thing. I watched Daniel's review. I watched DJ LSB Vapes review, his cranky DJ LSB Vapes review. Uh, Pre-built, pre-wicked, although I got an email directly from them saying don't use the pre-built, pre-wicked build that's in there. And here's the thing is I like Morton. I think he's a good guy. Oh, that cotton is just hanging in there. That was the most poorly wicked coil I may have ever seen. Why would they 
why would they pre-build it with such a cruddy wicking job? And so if you're not aware, Morton is someone I had talked about in the past. He's a YouTuber on YouTube and he's really obsessed with airflow. He's up there in Norway and he's real obsessed with airflow and he's real obsessed with like airflow and flavor and how the, how the thing works. And I'm gonna pull this coil out of here right away. But I am really interested to get into this. Okay, this isn't something that I'm necessarily gonna build in this vlog, just because I know it's a little bit finicky, it's a little bit wonky, there's there's issues, there's fit and finish tolerance issues with this, that you get like a gap at the bottom, although that seems fairly normal, that gap doesn't really bother me, I've seen that gap on a lot of mech mods, it's a way that mech mods kind of, uh, you know, disguise the way that their, uh, the, the, the way that their mods go together. So let's just put a battery in here, we got the Nord screwed all the way down, How how big is the gap really? Oh, well, my gap's non-existent. I don't have a gap right there at all. Got a little hair trigger on it. I'm really liking this mech mod. It's kind of, uh, I don't want to compare it too much to the dreamer, but it's a little dreamery. It's got this like contoured sort of thing on it. And one of the first mech mods that I saw that did that was the dreamer. And this looks a little bit dreamery to me, just ergonomically, it fits in the hand. It feels a lot like the dreamer. It feels substantially narrower. I mean, diameter all the way around. It's smaller than the dreamer because this is only an 18650 mechanical mod rather than the dreamer being, you know, 21700 compatible. Oh shit. Okay. No, I got to stick to it. I got to set up that vape fly. I'm, I'm much more interested in the vape fly than I am with this. I feel like this I'm gonna have to spend a lot more time with there's a lot of like you know I don't want to say hype but there's a lot going on around this whole combo right now including the Nord atomizer the feedback that I have been seeing from everybody every reviewer everywhere on reddit everywhere on Facebook everywhere everywhere is that the Nord has little to no flavor and Morton being such an airflow guy um, I, I find that weird. I find that interesting. I feel like, shit man, his atomizer should have really good flavor. He's been talking about airflow and airflow and airflow and airflow so much that how can his atomizer not have any flavor? I just want to test out the airflow. It's non-AFC. Nothing adjustable about this in any way. And I will say it is a aesthetically just based purely on aesthetics. That is a badass looking atomizer, man. This is a badass little atomizer mech mod combo as well. Airflow feels beautiful, feels beautiful and smooth. Okay, there's uh, there's like a little bit of a weird turbulence, like a little bit of sharpness going on in there. But overall, shit, feels really nice. Oh, am I gonna have to set this up? Am I gonna have to build this right now? All right, here's the thing. I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm switching everything. I no longer feel sorry for Vapefly. I promise that that Vapefly wormhole atomizer will get set up. It will get a review. I'm really gonna dig into it and I'm gonna make up for not doing the Galaxy's mouth to lung RDA. Although if the Galaxy's is something you wanna see, honestly, just let me know. I, I'm open to this. I have no loyalty to uh, like any sort of vendors or anything like that if you want to see something let me know we'll just we'll, th we'll throw a review for it up on YouTube but I will say in this exact moment I'm much more fascinated by the Nord combo here than I am with that vape fly galaxies even though I've been repping my vape fly hat all day or not I mean not all day just you know in in this segment I'm just talking now just to talk but it's got instructions use a three to five millimeter inner diameter coils five millimeter inner diameter coils? I can't imagine a single five millimeter diameter coil is not gonna give you really great flavor. I'm gonna go on the low end of that. I'm gonna go to like a three millimeter coils. It says used space coils, three to four wraps to ensure even firing and avoid hot spots. Lock coil into the post, leave enough space under the coil for cotton to be pulled through. You pull the cotton through and you put the other cotton in the little hole. There's a little, uh, if you watch Daniel DJ LSB Vapes video, there's a little like chamber for your extra cotton, like a, like a cup for your extra cotton to sit inside. Anyway, I I'm too fascinated by this right now. I have to set it up. I have to vape it, but 
I still have one package left, which we're gonna open. Oh, this is from uh, here. This is hilarious. Here's what's hilarious. Here's what's hilarious. Okay, remember last week in the vlog, we talked about the whole smoke and Rip Trippers thing and how Rip Trippers might not even known, or he did might have known. You know, what, whatever Rip Trippers does with his business is between him and his subscribers. I was just trying to give Rip Trippers a little bit of the benefit of the doubt that maybe he didn't know what was going on because Hangson used my image on their booth and I had no idea that it was going on. Hankson manufactures the IQ, the IQ level, which I still think is a bang and pod system. This came from, and here it is. Here's another IQ level and some pods, and they have a new device as well. This, this IQ guy right here, and this is very much more of like an Apple looking product, like more of an Apple looking product than I've seen in the vape world. Yeah, look at that. Look how, look at, look at it next to my magic mouse. It looks like it could be made by the same company. It even comes with like the screen protectors to cover it on the front and back. It feels like an old iPod, right? Or like an old, you know, what were those, uh, iPod shuffles? But it's got a display and this is a fill your own juice into the tank and then vape it out of like a, a you know, like a TV remote control looking thing. And this is the IQ something? IQ what? It just says Vape IQ. This is the IQ Ultra Portable device. They're not very good at this, are they? This just says the same thing, Vape IQ. In fact, for the longest time, I was calling this the IQ. I had to go to their website and see that it was called the IQ Level. So I don't know the exact name of this. I'll track down the exact name of it when I'm putting links down in the description, but this is the other device that they make. And what my, getting back to my point between Hangson and IQ, this came from Jasper Technology out of Walnut, California. So in order in order for this to get to me, there are three different like names that it goes by. Hankson manufactures the Vape IQ, maybe for Jasper Technology, and Jasper Technology is who I have been dealing with, which is really, really bizarrely interesting. Oh, and there's a cool black one. Okay, well shit. Let me take a quick look at this black one, and I apologize. This Vape Mail segment, it is. It is excessive. It's running way too long. I want to get a look at this black one. Oh, hey, yeah, that looks pretty cool. Maybe I do kind of want to set up this black one. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. But those are eventually going to get set up and vaped. I'm actually really fascinated by this. I, I like that it has a screen. I like that this is a pod system. It's not, I mean, w would you call this a pod system? The only reason I would call this a pod system is because you put a pod in it. Otherwise, this is borderline like a mod. This is like a vape device. Does it fall under the category of a pod system just because you have a refillable tank that you slide in here? I mean, we don't call sub -ohm tanks pod systems, even though they have a refillable tank that you put onto a mod. Very interesting when the technology is moving so fast, you don't even have the terminology to, to cover all of the products that you're releasing. But anyway, I'm excited about that. I'm excited to set that up. We'll set that up much later. That's the last package. So what I'm going to do right now is do a little bit of cleaning up and I'm going to set it up. I'm going to set up that Nord RDA and I'm going to rock it on this mech mod and I, I want to try it. I want to see, I want to see for myself how the flavor is. And don't worry, I'll show you pictures from the whole, you know, building process, how I built it, how I wicked it and why I'm getting the vape that I'm getting from it. But here we go. It's Nord time. All right. Thankfully, we're back to a normal hat. So I did install a single coil on this. It's a spaced single coil. I use the exact same coil uh, Fiends that I put in that recurve RDA. Um, Fiends packs, you know, like most coil builders do, you get a two pack of coils. So if you have two single coil atomizers, then you can put those coils into single coil atomizers. Came out to a zero point two and it's the same exact coil that I put in that recurve RDA and this fiends it's a framed 
Alien. So this is 36 gauge Nichrome 80 over, no, I, I can't read specs correctly, apparently. Anyway, it's an Alien frame staple. It's got two 28 gauge Nichrome 80 cores with 36 gauge wrap over it. Should be between 0.09 and a 0.11. Dual coil, five wrap, three millimeter. And so on a single coil, it comes out to about 0.22 on a single 18650 mech mod, which is perfectly good, 0.22, bang. It's right in that creamy center part of a good single 18650 mech mod build so far i mean right out of the gate i haven't had any of the problems that daniel had with his there's no gap up here there's no gap down here either and i didn't dent my battery this is screwed in completely all the way and i know daniel was having some issues with this denting the top of his batteries all i can say is that mine does not i can prove it here i'll pull this out we can all look at the top of my battery it, with, uh, with the exception of two little black scuff marks it's it's perfect top of my battery is not not dented and I can put this right into the mech mod just like that and I can crank this button down all the way it screws all the way down so there's no battery rattle and that's not a gap I don't know maybe if that's what he was seeing that he thought was a gap that's just from the beveling of the button the beveling of the mod and the beveling of the button kind of come together but the button itself is painted black so even if I did unscrew this like twice and there is a little gap there it's painted black mech mod makers do this on purpose so that the button acts as a little bit of a telescoping feature so if you need to run your mech mod like this, it's not going to look uh, completely ridiculous because of the way that it's beveled. But I can screw this all the way in, flat, flush, and uh, it holds the battery secure. That's the build that I have in there. That's that Fiends frame staple. Got it wicked. Got my cotton in the cotton cup there. It's wicked fairly snugly using that, uh, you know, using that new cotton that I got from Apaca, the swag cotton. And it was... I was holding it at an angle and I leaked juice everywhere because I just dripped juice all over this thing. So I haven't taken any vapes on this, any toots on this yet. So like I said, I installed the coil and it's a little bit weird because this atomizer does that thing where it's going to twist your coils around because there's a little slot for you to put your coil in and the screw comes down from the top. And so if you have something thick or wide like an alien, you're gonna have to twist it so that the screw can come down and capture your lead. Then you have to kind of twist it back and move your coil into place. There's a little bit of a learning curve with this. It took me a little bit longer to install a coil on this than say something really, you know, simple like the TM24. I think the TM24 is one of the easiest at atomizers to install coils on. Uh, same with the Goon. It's just really easy to install coils on. Even that Recurve RDA, really simple to install some coils on. This one was a little bit difficult, had a little bit of a learning curve, but I got it built. I got it wicked. It was glowing perfectly. I got juice all over it. So when I press the button, the vapors happen. I got this loaded up with that Yami Vapor Juicy juice that I picked up at ECC. We're down to the end of this 120 mil bottle. And if all goes well with this, and this is a setup that I want to keep going, then obviously I'm going to put this into a glass dripper bottle. And so there's three sides that your airflow is going to be hitting your coils. One, two, three. Neither of these, I mean, none of these are uh, sort of like covered up by cotton or anything like that. All of my airflow has a direct path to my coil. And because of that cotton sort of catch cup that he has in there, that's what helps the air get directly to your coil without any cotton getting in the way. In fact, I'm just going to move this cotton even just a little bit more. I want to make sure it's really in that cup right there. I don't want any cotton getting in the way of this airflow. So like I said, I'm pretty sure that I'll be able to taste the difference. This Juicy juice from Yami Vapor is something I have been vaping since ECC. It's been in that uh, uh, Kali RDA. I've been vaping it, I mean, daily, daily and nightly. I'm very familiar with this juice and how it should taste so I'm interested I'm really interested to see how this tastes because honestly all I've heard so far is that this atomizer doesn't have a whole lot of flavor so we're gonna get that top cap all on there <laughs> no adjustable airflow on this so let's go in let's try our first toot
Um, yeah, I mean, I can I can definitely taste my juice. There's not zero flavor, but the flavor that I'm getting from this right now, it, it's not great. It's not ideal. I would say that it is half of the flavor that I was getting from that Kali uh, with the same juice. But let's give it another shot. This is a .22. It's not like a big cloud chasey build. It's not real hot. This is a very sort of a cooler, cooler vaping situation happening right now. No, oh, I think you have to adjust the way that you drag on this. I think this is coming back to what Kent and I were talking about a few vlogs ago when he was at my house. And we were talking about how hard you drag on an RDA greatly affects the way that that RDA performs. Greatly affects how much vapor you get and it greatly affects the flavor. In my first drag on this, I pulled hard. I pulled hard like it was a recoil rebel, like I was just gonna cloud chase. I pulled real hard on it and I didn't get a whole lot of really great flavor, but that second pull, I softened it down a little bit. I just made it a little less intense, gave it more, more of like a, a smoother, like a softer sort of drag on it. I feel like you don't want to go crazy and like, like full cloud comp, but if you do one of these like a little bit softer, a little bit more mellow of an inhale, I felt like I got some pretty good flavor right there. Let's try it again. Yeah, that that actually tastes uh, good. That actually tastes like my juice. Maybe uh, maybe Mr. Morton Owen was really onto something. Lighter drags, lighter drags. That that tastes great. That juice tastes great. That. That juice tastes like juicu juice. I can definitely taste my liquid. It's not amazing, you know, it's not unbelievable flavor. You know, people always have these really high expectations for flavor, like you're gonna start suddenly picking out subtle nuances of juices that you've, you've never experienced before, like this intense, rich, rich, like insanely saturated, rich, dense flavor. I think people, <laughs> I think people build it up a little bit in their head, and when it tastes good, but not amazing, I think people tend to get let down down just a little bit, but so far, let me take another really hard drag and, and see where the flavor goes on that. Yeah, I mean, it's substantially less vapor. It's substantially less flavor the harder that you drag on this atomizer. Getting a few little uh, leaky nubbins out of the airflow holes, but that's because I overdripped for sure. And I really love this matte black finish on here, but it does show juice. Any little tiny leak or molecule of juice that you have on this outer top cap, it's going to show. The matte black looks awesome, but it shows juice like crazy. Softer, softer drag. That's what I'm discovering. Softer drags. Yeah, that juice tastes good. That juice tastes awesome in this. Yeah, it's just a softer, softer, more mellow drag on this. You still get plenty of warm vapor and you get some pretty damn good flavor as well. All right, cool. Well, there you go. Obviously, I want to spend a lot of time with this. You're literally seeing my very first toots on this Morton Owen uh, Nord RDA combo, but right out of the gate, I'm going to say I love the way this looks. It looks so fucking cool. I could do without this Ultim. Let's get rid of that Ultim drip tip. Where's my dock tip? I want a knurled dock tip on here. Or maybe shit here, I'll throw one of these on here. These are those District 5 tips. Oh, that looks, oh, it's a little too big. Wow, that's a bummer. It's a little too wide for this. Wow, that sucks. And I can't even find my authentic drip tips, my authentic dock tips. I'm gonna have to use a counterfeit dock tip. But that with the knurled black, wow, that looks so much better. So much better than that Ultim. Yeah, that's uh, that's great. This is great. Longer, slower, less intense drags, and you get you get that flavor. You get you get much more flavor out of it. 
Yeah, it tastes exactly like Jusu. It tastes delicious. It tastes like my juice. Anyway, yeah, there you go. There's my first, like, uh, what is that? Few first 10 minutes or so with this uh, with this Nord combo. I'm going to keep vaping it. We'll report back next week on how it's been going, how it's been performing, but that's what I got set up. Let me look at my vlog schedule real quick. That's right. After vape mail, I got it right here. Where is it? There it is. It's time now, friends, to do some retro vaping. In fact, I might just use that Nord RDA on this. So while I was moving, I found all of my old mod boxes that I had packed up. And I have mods packed up from the last nine years. And so I found a box of mech mods. And it wasn't the box of mech mods that I was exactly looking for, but this box did have a bunch of cool mech mods in it. So we're gonna be looking at some older mech mods for maybe this month, maybe this whole month, maybe the whole month of May actually is gonna be like some older mech mods. And this was a mech mod that I used to really, truly, pardon me, that I used to really, truly, truly love. This is the Ambassador. There used to be a company based out of Southern California called, uh, what were they called? Oh God, I can't believe I forgot this. Emit, Emit Vapor. They were called Emit Vapor and they made a bunch of really cool mech mods. They made some of my favorite mech mods, that shotgun mech mod. I just loved the crap out of that thing, but they made a 26650 mech mod called the Ambassador. And the fit and finish on all of their mech mods was just beautiful. I mean, this mech mod is years and years old with months and months of use on it. It still looks beautiful. All the fit and fit, all these threads, this threading on the top, well, maybe a little bit. It's a little bit old, but the threading, all the threading was just beautiful on it. It had a self-adjusting spring in the bottom. There was nothing to adjust anywhere on this. Yeah, these threads are a little bit old, but they're still not bad. Yeah, there's that spring. There's your contact right there. It's a big, soft, squishy button on the bottom. So I think I still have some decent 26650 sitting around here. Yeah, I got these E-Fest guys. I hope they fit in here. Yeah, E-Fest guy fits in there. All right, well, let's grab this Nord. Let's just keep vaping on this Nord a little bit. It's not going to look super cool on here, but it's going to vape. Yeah, juice. Juice everywhere. This matte black just shows juice like crazy. Look at that. That's just from unscrewing it. I had way too much juice in there. Holy, sh look at that. That is ridiculous, Nick Green. <laughs> that is a ridiculous amount of juice. That's how much I overdrip. That is just pure over dripping right there. I got juice everywhere now. Juice is just, God, why do I do that? I hate juice so much. One of my least favorite things on earth is having juice everywhere and juice gets on your mod, just gets on your atomizer and juice just gets in your life. It just becomes part of your life and I hate it. I hate having juice on my fingers. I constantly am wiping. All my shirts smell like e-liquid because I'm constantly like wiping my fingers on my shirt. Oh yeah, and this mech mod, oh God, I leaked more juice out of the top. Wow, I really over dripped this thing hard. I was being uh, just the most careless. Anytime I tilt this, juice just pours out of those airflow holes. And I don't know right now if that's my fault or if that's the atomizer's fault, but I'm definitely leaning towards it could be my fault. But yeah, this mech mod had a locking feature on it, so you could unscrew it like that, completely locked your button, unlock it like this, and it would unlock your button. If I press the button, yeah, some vapors are happening in there. It's big, it's honking, I get it. And single 26650 mech mods never really took off. And it's because of the limitations, I think, on the 26650 cells. I don't know if Battery Mooch did a lot of 26650 testings. In fact, oh fuck, I had something I wanted to say about Battery Mooch. I meant to put this in the news and advocacy section. All right, well, it's going in the retro vaping section. Battery Mooch has started a Patreon. I'm one of his patrons. You should definitely sign up for the Patreon. Battery Mooch has been providing us with wonderful, concise, clear, scientific battery reporting for the last few years, and he wants to do it full time. He wants it to be his job, and I think that is 
fucking amazing. I think that the value that Battery Mooch brings to this industry and brings to our community is invaluable. So I have no problem giving him 10 bucks a month and I don't even want any extra perks. I don't I don't care about any of that. I don't care about any extra perks. I'm literally just giving him $10 a month so we can continue to get amazing battery testing done and really really get to know our cells. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link in the description to the Battery Mooch YouTube as well as the Battery Mooch Patreon and I would highly suggest just a buck a month, two bucks a month. This shit really helps out and it's really going to help Battery Mooch be able to do this full time and to give us better, more accurate information about the cells that we are using inside of our mods, which is very, very important. At least it's very, very important to me. It should be very, very important to all of us. But going back to what I was saying, so like I said, I'm going to put links down in the description. So going back to what I was saying is there aren't a lot of really great 26650 cells, at least that work in sort of a single battery mech mod configuration. Now this did come with a big atomizer on top of it, a big like 30 millimeter diameter atomizer atomizer that was real weird and I didn't enjoy it but right now I got the Nord I got a freshly charged eFest 26650 in here and uh yeah I'm just gonna give it a shot Well, you know, it's not great. It's not performing real super great. And I don't know if that's because of the battery. I don't know if maybe these contacts are just a little bit dirty in here. One of the things that mech mods need to keep performing at, you know, peak performance is a little bit of TLC. You got to get in there. You got to clean out the threads. You got to clean off your contacts. You got to make sure it's hitting nice and hard all the time. And right now, it's not hitting nice and hard all the time. And right now, there's still juice coming out of these airflow holes. Did I really over drip it that much or is this just really super prone to leaking? Those bottom holes, there's three holes. One, two, three, let me show you. There's three holes on here, one, two, three, and the bottom hole always has juice in it. Even when I need to drip some more, the bottom hole still has a little bit of juice just kind of sitting there. And again, I don't know if that's a fault of mine from over dripping or if that's a fault of the atomizer with that airflow being maybe just a little bit too low. Anyway, let's have another toot on that. It's not about the Nord right now, it's about the Ambassador. You know what, it's fine. It's working fine. I have a feeling it's this battery. I'm gonna swap out this battery real quick. I don't regularly use and charge up 26650 batteries, so I'm gonna throw this one on the charger. I'm gonna use an iJoy 26650, but I'm gonna check the charge on it before I throw it back in this mech mod. Hang on. Yeah, that other EFES battery was uh, bordering right around a little under 50% charged, whereas this one was at 100% charged. So let's give it another shot here. Already, already better, already better. This Ambassador, as much as I loved it, it wasn't a real great performer. It wasn't just, it wasn't like a Clouds Bro Clouds type of really great performing mech mod. It was always just a mech mod that I used because I liked holding it so much. It was just a really great size. It felt really durable. I liked that everything auto adjusted and you didn't have to adjust anything. There were no little pins up here with threading that you had to adjust. There was no pins down here with threading that you had to adjust. The, at the Emit Vapor mech mods were the first mech mods that I ever used that had self-adjusting everything. All you had to do was attach an atomizer, throw in a battery, and everything, pardon me, would be adjusted for you. And that's why I kept using these. Not because they were like, pardon me, I don't know why I'm so gassy right now. <laughs> Not because they were like amazing performers, which they were fine. They were fine performers, but I really liked the extra added features of not having to fiddle with tiny little screws and contacts, not having to do anything like that. You just, like I said, you throw in a battery, you put on an atomizer, and it would vape right away. There you go, the Emit Vapor Ambassador. I believe I did a review for this 
years ago, years and years ago, maybe in 2014, I'm going to try to track down. <sighs> I'm trying to try to track down my review of this, but I'm not 100% sure when it was or where it was. And I think I did this mech mod with another mech mod as well. I think I did two mech mods in one video and this was one of them. I just, I, I don't remember. That's what happens when you upload over a thousand videos to YouTube. I couldn't possibly keep track of all of them and know exactly where everything is. So, like I said, I'm going to try to track down my original review of this from back in 2014. But yeah, it's the Ambassador. It's a 26650 mech mod. These were rather expensive. These were well over $100. I think these Ambassadors went for like $160 or $170 back in the day. But these were made and manufactured in the United States back in the day when a lot of stuff was made and manufactured in the United States. And I'm not trying to make some, you know, broad sweeping political statement right there as far as the vape industry goes but i'm just saying back in the day a lot of stuff was manufactured in the united states and emit vapor was one of them and unfortunately you know they they went out of business for whatever reason they went out of business and stopped making mods but i always really truly did enjoy their mods anyway let me have one last toot and we're gonna wrap this up Okay, so what I'm going to do right now, just in the interest of time, I'm not going to include a getting to know Grim Green. Next week, I do want to do a getting to know Grim Green, and I know I haven't done one in a while, but if anybody has any getting to know Grim Green questions that they would like to see answered on this here vlog, it's a segment that I am actually going to bring back into the vlog, although I've skipped it the last, like, four or five vlogs in a row. It's something that I want to continue doing. If anybody has any getting to know Grim Green questions that they would like to see answered on this here program, hopefully not too intrusive, but I'm okay with some intrusiveness. You can send them on over to nick at grimgreen.com. So what I'm gonna do right now, what we're going to do right now is jump straight into some viewer mails. All right. Well, we got some viewer mails. And again, if anybody has any viewer mails that I'd like to see answered on this here program, just send them on over to nick at grimgreen.com. Just mark your subject viewer mail. Sometimes they don't get replied to uh, via email. It's honestly coming to the point where I'm having a real hard time like replying to the majority of emails that I get. I really feel like it's an important thing to reply to as many emails as I possibly can. And I am currently trying to reply to as many emails as I can, but the number of emails that come into my inbox, and I'm not just trying to brag here, it's a lot. So I'm really trying my best, but if anybody has any viewer mails that they would like to see answered on this here show, like maybe it would be an added benefit if more people heard the answer to this than just one person, sure, send them on over. Nick at groomgreen.com. I'm always taking some viewer mails. I got one here from uh, Justin. Justin writes in and says, uh, hey Nick, I only recently found your channel you popped up you popped up in my up next while I was watching an advice talk piece from Steve at Legion Vapes. Oh, very cool. I'm new to the vaping world having jumped from the tobacco ship March 11th, 2018. I'm going to get this date inked when I hit smoke free for a year after smoking one and a half packs a day for 20 years. Living in a small town of Newfoundland, Canada with no local, local vape shop, I ordered a smoke alien kit and an extra pack of baby T8.15 coils due to the positive reviews I've seen, unable to take the try before you pro try before you buy approach in terms of liquid or anything else for that matter. I seriously want to get into rebuildables. Having an engineering background, this seems right up my alley. What would you what would you suggest to do in terms of delving into the world of RDAs? Are the bells and whistles really all that necessary? Ohm reader as opposed to your typical multimeter, jigs and fixtures, etc. And what RDA would be your default choice for a first time builder? Oh, that's tough. That's going to be rough. That's 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 gonna be tough. Thanks very much for taking the time out of your schedule. I've been watched. I've binged watched hours upon hours of your reviews and vlogs since finding your channel, and I hope you keep it up for years to come. Justin, uh, P.S. Living in a remote locale sucks. Know any suppliers that don't charge an arm and a leg and a left testicle on Canadian shipping? Um, no, I don't know who's up there. Who, who's up there in Canada? I want to throw Mike Smiter's name out there. Mike Smiter runs CV Vapes out of Canada and uh, you might be able to get something uh, from him shipped uh, within Canada. So 
That's the name I'm going to throw out there right now. I think it's CV. I think it's CV Vapes. Um, but you were talking about uh, RDA. So all the bells and whistles, look, getting an ohm reader is just going to be an easier process for you. It's going to be a lot easier to read the resistance of your coils. I like this Coil Master one, honestly. Or no, not the Coil Master one, this Geek Vape one. I like this Geek Vape one. It takes an 18650, one, two, three, four, five. You can turn it on and check your resistance and you can even fire it. And it's just a handy dandy little thing when you're building your coils, when you want to check the resistance and, and glow them as you're building it. And you continuously check your resistance because the resistance obviously is going to change, you know, as you're heating up your coil and stuff like that. So a lot of things like this or an ohm reader, really good thing to have just in general. If you're comfortable using a multimeter and you know how to use one to check your resistance, absolutely. If you have a multimeter, use one. As far as the rest of the accessories like uh, jigs and fixtures and things like that, um, that's really up to you. If you're just going to be doing round wire builds, you don't necessarily need a lot of fancy stuff like that. If you're going to get into things like uh, Clapton's or Aliens, then yeah, you're probably going to want to get some fishing swivels. You're probably want to get, going to want to get some clamps. You're probably going to want to get a drill and things like this. One thing that I use for building coils that is invaluable to me is this graduated uh, sort of coil wrapping tool. You can find these on Amazon. You can just search for graduated coil wrapping tool. And these go from uh, a 1.5 millimeter all the way up to a 3.5 millimeter. And you can wrap your coils on any of the little segments. And this is a little handy tool to have to like, you know, position your coils and put them into place and kind of push them around and pull them around. I love this and I use it constantly when I'm building RDAs. As far as the actual RDA goes, there's a lot of there's a lot of great RDAs out there. One of them that I thought recently was really easy to build on. I really like that Equitas RDA might be something worth looking at. I also really like the Dead Rabbit RDA might be something worth looking at. I really like the Drop RDA that might be something worth looking at. All of those are pretty easy, straightforward sort of clip your leads and drop them in and, and screw down your screws and you're good. They don't twist your wire in any weird way. They're all really straightforward. Honestly, most anything with a velocity style deck, including the Velocity RDA, Breeze. Breeze to build on. There's like older ones like the Geek Vape Tsunami that had a Velocity style deck and Kennedy style airflow, which I know Kennedy style, Velocity style, it's it's a thing. It's, it's, it's China stealing designs and whatnot, but a Velocity style deck does really work very well and it is a breeze and a half to build on. I genuinely think, like I said earlier, I think the TM24, either the TM24 or the TM24 Pro is one of the easiest RDAs to build on just ever. It's got a big block right through the middle. It's got big holes for your leads. It's got big secure screws that clamp down those leads. It's it's a breeze. It's a breeze to build on. If you have the funds for it, something like the TM24 Pro Series, I think would benefit you greatly as a first RDA. It's real easy to build on and it's got great airflow, really nice construction, but there are a lot of RDAs out there. And, you know, it, would, it wouldn't be in my best interest, obviously, to mention things like the Recoil Rebel RDA as well. I think that's pretty easy to build on. But again, that's my own RDA. So I have a huge bias towards that RDA. But there's a lot. There's a lot out there. Get on YouTube. Watch some reviews. Check out the Equitas. Check out the Dead Rabbit. Check out the Drop. Check out the Twisted Messes 24 Pro Series. Maybe even look at a Goon if you're into it. Although on the Goon, there's a little bit of a learning curve. It's got clamps instead of holes and it's a little bit different. It's a little bit of a different thought process to you know get your coils positioned in there. It's not incredibly difficult. Like I said, it's just a little bit of a, a bit, little bit of a learning curve in there. Anyway, thank you, Justin, so much for writing in. I hope that answers your question. Got another viewer mail here. This is a long one, but I want to read the whole thing from Aaron. So Aaron writes in and says, Dear Grim Green, I'm Aaron. We've met a few times in person, but this is the first time I'm writing to you. I hope this isn't too long, but here goes. It's not too long, Aaron, but it is also 
yes, too long. I'm just giving you a hard time. So he says, the first electronic cigarette patent was filed by a New Yorker by the name of Joseph Robinson on May 3rd, 1927, to allow for the simulated experience of smoking without smoke and thereby reducing harm to the people. 1927. Yet, I feel like the FDA has chosen to regulate a lot. Yet, I feel like the FDA has chosen to regulate electronic cigarettes even harsher than they do regular cigarettes. I recently had seen that the FDA was trying to establish a new maximum nicotine level in cigarettes. This new change feels like the first justice served to the tobacco industry, but still serves as a blow to the vaping industry. The FDA is considering setting a nicotine standard that would make all these products minimally or even non-addictive. This means lowering the nicotine level in any product to an undetectable number for the body. Remember back in the mouth to lung only days, dropping nicotine, dropping nicotine was one of the hardest things to do after I made the switch. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. Lowering your nicotine back in the mouth to lung only days when I first started vaping was a, was a long process. I vaped 36 milligram for like six months for a real long time. I was on the highest, highest nicotine and I went, okay, well maybe now it's time to drop my nicotine a little bit. So I dropped down to 24 milligram vape fat for a few months, finally settled right around 18 or 12. When we were just doing mouth to lung stuff back in the day, 18 was like my standard and 12 was when I wanted to drop down a little bit more. But it's right, dropping your nicotine is kind of difficult. When you drop your nicotine, you have the tendency to vape more, which is why I think lowering the nicotine level in cigarettes is just going to cause people to smoke more. But I digress. Let's get back on track here with this viewer mail. Uh, he says, along with my fiance and a lot of other people, I've successfully used electronic cigarettes to quit smoking tobacco entirely. I've been smoke free for six years and quit smoking by using electronic cigarettes. My health and visible... My health has visibly and markedly improved. Vaping is the solution to the number one killer in the world, tobacco. Vaping has the potential to end smoking and end health issues associated with it. I believe that this can happen in my lifetime. I am hoping that those in the FDA ask themselves this question. And this is going straight back to that very critical article that we read about the FDA earlier. Aaron's on board with it. I'm hoping that the FDA can ask themselves this question. How can you say you truly do care about the health of anyone inhaling nicotine if you do not act to ensure their access to a safer alternative. The far-reaching regulations that the FDA has established by using the Tobacco Control Act will only serve to eradicate the vaping industry and our access to the wide variety of vapor products. It serves to end nicotine as well. Adult smokers have come to rely on these products to continue their smoke-free lifestyle. Thousands of Americans, like me, will lose their jobs as vape shops and manufacturers are close are forced to close their doors. In closing, looking at vaping as a bad thing we need to heavily regulate is absurd and a detriment to public health. Please look at how valuable vaping is and its respected technologies are or could be for the health of Americans and American businesses. I hope the FDA sees it that way too. What do you think is minimum Nick level a good thing? Thanks, Nick. I don't know how to end this so here's a quote vaping can save vaping can save lives but it's up to us to save vaping yeah absolutely aaron i completely agree with you aaron you put your you gave you gave a quote from yourself at the end of an email and that's a very interesting take on that but you're absolutely right vaping can save lot can save lives but it's up to us to save vaping i do not think that the minimum nicotine level is a good thing in any capacity because of the you know story i just told with trying to lower my nicotine whenever i would lower my nicotine i would just find myself vaping more. When I went from 24 to 18, I found myself vaping more. When I went from 18 to 12, I found myself vaping more. When I lowered my nicotine, I vaped more. And I think lowering nicotine in cigarettes is really just a good thing for big tobacco because they're going to sell more cigarettes because more people are smoking. And this is something that I wanted to include in the news, but I didn't have the time to do the full research and get all the articles and quotes that I needed to for it, but for the first time, I believe ever, Big Tobacco has taken a net 
loss in their in their annual revenue, you know, whatever quarterly reports, they have taken a huge, huge loss. Less people are smoking cigarettes, which means more people are either quitting or vaping and not buying cigarettes, which means the government, the federal government and the state and local governments are losing that tobacco tax money. This all comes back to money. And I hate to sound like Alex Jones and I'm not gonna do my Alex Jones impression right now. Obama's the devil. But this really does all come back to money. I, I do not believe that the FDA has our best interests in mind. And I do not think that lowering the nicotine level in cigarettes is going to do anything beneficial. It's only going to make people smoke more. And I absolutely agree with you. Vaping, it's not that vaping can save lives. It's that vaping will save lives, but it is up to us to save vaping. Anyway, Luke, great email. Thank you so much for sending that in. Got a few more here. How are we doing on time? We're doing great on time. Got one here from uh, Amy. Amy sent me an email and says, I've been a big fan for nearly three three years now. You've been a major influence on helping keep me cigarette free. Well, thank you very much. It's my pleasure. It's, it's my job. It's what I do. I love your videos. I found your reviews comprehensive and helpful. Okay, well, thank you. Now you're just making me blush. Amy. I enjoy all of your vlogs and podcasts all the way till the end, including the wonderful Easter eggs. And if I ever get the opportunity, I would be super excited to get a big hug and a fist bump. Well, we can, we can absolutely make that happen. Anyways, this is my puppy. He is a 16 week old cockapoo. And I was wondering if you had any name suggestions for him. Thanks for being so fantastic in the vape world. You really are making a difference. Amy. All right, let's, where did I save the picture of this dog? Oh, that is a floof of a dog. You have the floofiest floof dog that's ever been a floofy floof dog. I will never be upset about getting pictures of people's dogs. Let's see, names? Hmm, names. Well, I mean, you could go with the obvious. You could you can name him Grim. Although I feel like that's a little that's a little too much. Back in the day, there was a girl on uh, Vapor's forum that named her cat Grim, and I thought that was just I thought that was just the coolest thing ever. But seriously, you don't have to name your dog Grim. Here's the thing: I like dogs with human names. I think that's one of the funniest fucking things on earth. Back in the day when I was working at Starbucks, and I know this isn't getting to know Grim Green, but back in the day when I was working at Starbucks and I was just a barista, I was a shift supervisor at a at a Starbucks store. I had my good buddy Taylor who I haven't been able to track down since then. Taylor, if you're out there, hit me up, man. But me and Taylor, we were uh, we, we were really good friends. We had a lot of fun together, and he was one of the funniest guys I ever know. And his family had a pug, and their pug's name was Paul. And I thought that that was just the most hilarious thing I'd ever heard. And I love dog names with human. I love dogs with human names. So I would suggest a human name. I would suggest something like. Uh, Steve, a dog named Steve, that's hilarious. Paul is always a good way to go. You could use names that don't really, like you don't see a lot of people named Keith anymore. Like I know I have one of the Cool Kids Club Patreon members, his name is Keith, but you don't see a lot of Keith anymore. So I feel like maybe Keith would be a good name for this dog. I don't know, I'm bad at naming animals. Anyway, Amy, I hope that you pick out a good name for your dog. If you do, uh, let me know. I'd love to know what you ended up naming your dog. I got another email here from Bobotron. Bobotron is a uh, frequent writer in of this here vlog program. And he says, hey Nick, have you ever vaped juice that tastes fine on the inhale but has little to no flavor on the exhale and leaves no lingering flavor in your mouth whatsoever. I'm just wondering if you know why that happens. In my five years of vaping, I can count on one hand how many times it's happened to me. Bad Drip's Cereal Trip is a juice that does that. Anyway, thanks, dude. Keep up the good work. Um, I have experienced that. The only time... I think it comes down to the ingredients. Honestly, I think when you have a really VG heavy juice, I think that's what causes it. I as well could count on one hand how many times that has happened to me. And every time it's happened to me, it's been with a juice that is really VG heavy. I mean, more VG heavy than normal, like a 90 VG juice. VG just does not 
carry the flavor in the vapor very well at all. PG, propylene glycol, in our liquids is what carries that flavor. And the less PG you have, the less flavor carrying you're going to have. So Bobotron, maybe look at the PGVG content of the juice that you're doing. And if it's a high VG, chances are that's what's causing it. Because like I said, I mean, running the risk of repeating myself, VG just doesn't carry the flavor that well. Anyway, let's wrap this up. I got one more here. We're doing pretty good on time. I got one more here from Terry that I wanted to read. Cotton Collapse. That's what he says. Cotton Collapse. All caps, exclamation points. Cotton Collapse. He says, hey, Nick, I've tried everything I can think of. I've tried three different cotton brands, enough cotton to start moving my coils, barely enough to fill the coil. My cotton can consistently collapses after two or three days. Am I missing something or expecting it to last longer than possible? I don't really chain vape or vape more. Uh, pardon me. <laughs> Sorry. There was no warning on that. And here's the thing. I'm, the reason that that happens, I'm trying to drink more water, I'm trying to drink more water in my life. And so whenever you start consuming liquid and you start speaking and you're using your diaphragm and you're breathing and you're speaking, yeah, gases and gassy things happen. Also vaping the Zur. No, I didn't mean to say that vaping the Zur causes gas like that to happen. I just wanted to throw that out there. It wasn't in my what I've been vaping, but I've also been vaping the Zur. In fact, me and Casey just ordered a whole mess of Apple Pods from Vapor DNA because I like them so much. Anyway, cotton collapse. Uh, I don't really chain vape or vape more than I think a normal person would. When I switch the cotton out, the middle is almost completely gone. What else should I try Thanks for everything you do. Absolutely. So this isn't going to be a super easy question to answer because I have more questions for you. When you pull your cotton out, are the ends singed? Are they singed brown or black from being burnt? Or when you pull your cotton out, is it literally just separating in the middle and pulling strands apart? Or is it actually, actually collapsed to the point where when you pull your cotton out, it just separates so easily. There's no strings, there's no fibers holding it together, and there's nothing singed on there as well. Most of the time, what happens with cotton collapse for me is I was running it dry for a little bit too long. I, I either run it dry too long or I'm using, uh, or the wattage is just, uh, the wattage is just too high. I mean, Cotton isn't, you know, heat proof. It's not heat resistant. It's it's affected by heat. It shrinks and expands when there's moisture and heat applied to it. So it could be breaking down your cotton, although that's that seems odd to me. But what happens to me is when I have a coil that is too long, that's when I get cotton collapse, especially inside of RTAs. I get real bad cotton collapse when I have a coil that's too long, too many wraps. If I have like a frame staple and it's like a seven wrap, it ends up being quite a long coil. So that cotton in the middle of it is the first to get vaporized because coils heat up from the center out. And the longer of a drag you take, the drier and drier that cotton is getting in the middle. And sometimes it can burn or scorch and cause cotton collapse. I, I have no idea. Terry, here's the thing. I would need I would need pictures of your build. I would would need to see what cotton you're using. I'd love to see the cotton after you pull it out of your RDA. Assuming that you're using an RDA and not an RTA, you didn't specify. I feel like each situation of cotton collapse is unique because there's a lot of varying factors. Sometimes if you have a round wire build but there's a little bit of a hot spot, that can lead to cotton collapse. If your cotton is not snug enough, through the coil, that's something that can also lead to cotton collapse. If the cotton that you're using has fibers going the opposite direction, that is a huge factor in cotton collapse. That's why I don't get cotton collapse. Whenever I use the Kogendo organic Japanese cotton and you can see the fibers of the cotton running vertically, you wick them that way through the coil and that really does help prevent cotton collapse. Try some Kogendo, that's gonna be my solution for you, Terry. Try some Kogendo, track down some Kogendo Japanese organic cotton. You can get it on Amazon. It looks like this. It looks like this, and you can see the vertical fibers running up and down this cotton. That's gonna help keep your cotton more 
together, more secure, less prone to collapsing. I actually just had cotton collapse in my K fund because I was running a real small, it was like a five wrap single coil on there. And it just, you know, eventually gets too hot and runs maybe too dry at some points on that cotton. And when I went to rewick my K fund, I just grabbed the cotton with my tweezers and it just lifted out. Like one half of it just lifted out. The cotton was not even touching in the middle. So I apologize. I, I apologize for going so on and on about cotton collapse, but my first suggestion is try some Kogan dough. If that doesn't work, you wanna make it snug, but not snug enough to move your coils. And you wanna make sure that you're not running it at too high of a wattage. You don't have any hot spots in your coils and you're keeping your coils and cotton nicely moistened. And I think that's uh, I think that's all the advice that I have for you. Honestly, if anybody has any advice about cotton collapse, this is an interesting subject, I think, that maybe doesn't get talked enough about. If anybody has any cotton collapse tips or tricks or how to prevent it, throw it down in the comments below. And maybe we can uh, maybe we can help Terry out. Terry, look down in the comments for, for people's suggestions on cotton collapse. Maybe I'll screen capture some. We'll go over them next week next week as well because uh, I like I like talking about cotton collapse. It's a, it's a weird thing, you know? It's just a weird thing that happens. So we're going to wrap up that viewer mail. If anybody else has any viewer mails that they want to see answered on this here vlog, just send them on over to nick at grimgreen.com. And uh, like I said, before. They don't generally get answered via email, but they could get answered and discussed on the vlog here. So cool. All right, we're coming down. We're coming down to the end of the vlog here, you guys. So the next thing we have to do is we are going to do a very random juice tasting. So I do have a juice here that we are going to very randomly taste, but I had no literally nothing about it. Mana bush. Mana bush e-liquid. Wow, you Google mana bush, it's the first search result. Mana bush e-liquid limited. This comes out of the UK. This comes out of Europe. Okay, so uh, it's 06, 04, 77. Let me in. Mana bush. And this is the, oh, I can't pronounce that. Chercaclia, Chercaclia Sun. It seems to have a uh, a sort of uh, you know a Native American you know I, I hate using the term Indian but like Native American sort of uh, theming to it. Chercaca, Chir I can't pronounce this. I'm not even going to try and pronounce this. Churiuca Sun E Liquid by Manbush. Churiaka. So here's the thing. This is this is down. This is lower in level in e-liquid. But I have not vaped any of this, and I don't remember the gentleman's name. So you'll have to forgive me. But if you are the person that gave this to me at Vape Jam UK this year, please comment down below so I can give you proper credit. But we're all kind of just uh, standing around in a circle, you know, like you do in high school. You kind of like group up a little bit, and we're all kind of just talking around. And this one guy was like, "How do you feel?" About about uh, this, that, and the other juice. And I was like, oh, I, I, you know, I generally really like that. So he's like, here, try this. And so we dripped it and vaped it. And I was like, wow, that's actually really delicious. He's like, oh, here, just have my bottle. And I was like, no, no, I'm not, I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take your bottle of juice. That would be ridiculous of me to do that. He was very, very insistent because I kept commenting on how cool I thought these bottles were. Look at that. Look at that big tip right there. And then a cap that goes over it. It is a leak free system. I don't know why we don't have these caps in the United States. Oh, that's right. It's because they're not childproof. And I love non childproof caps. And I just want to say again, for the record, childproof caps should be the ultimate supreme standard in all vape liquid bottles. Okay, it just should be. But with that said, I don't have any kids, so I like non-childproof bottles. This is a non-childproof bottle. It's got a big tip on there. It's nice and clean. It's got a big coney tip on there, which I really, really like. This is a 50-50 PGVG. This is a short fill, so it was once zero nicotine, but he added his own shot to it, which made it a three milligram. Anyway, I'm excited to try this, but I want to read the flavor profile first because I don't really remember what it was going to taste like. I'm never going to be able to print. I wonder if Google can help me pronounce this. Chiracawi. That's how you pronounce it. 
Chiricahua. I would have never guessed that. Thank you, Google. Chiricahua were a band of Apache Native Americans based in the Southern Plains in Southwest United States. So basically what is, looks like Texas now, like Texas, what is that? Texas, New Mexico, and Arizona right there. That's where the Chiricahua Indians were. All right. Okay, good. The internet is awesome. So it says Chiricahua Sun is a mild tobacco base with an indefeatable sweet nutty topping created as a labor of love by your head creator at Manabush founder this juice is not simply a personal touch but is a story behind its creation okay the name is a tribute to the whole concept of the man bush e-liquid branding and idea i've always been a music yet lover as a young man and even still today i'm a very big fan of adam and the ants the cult and the claytown troop dude the cult is amazing i used to listen to sonic temple in high school all of which drew heavily on native american art and imagery in the early years when the concept of mana bush was first conceived this was the influence that steered me to choosing everything from the name to the actual branding available in TPD compliant format in either a 10 mil bottle or three mil, 10 mil, three 10 mil multi-packs. Anyway, here we go. Mana Bush, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a knuckle test right here just so I can remember what you taste like. Yeah, that's uh, it tastes like toffee. It tastes like toffee candy to me. I love a good tobacco flavor. I've got the, uh, I've got my setup, so here's a slight detour on this setup. When I unboxed this uh, USB Arc mod, I was like, oh, Kent, you should definitely use this USB Arc mod for your Blue Twisted Message 24. That would look so cool. And I said that kind of without even thinking about it, and I didn't even realize, but yeah, this is the exact setup that he had when we went on Bro Trip 8 Dumont Dunes, which was actually Bro Trip 10, but who's who's counting? So I have a freshly wicked TM24 on here. Manabush, how do I say it? Chiricahua, Chiricahua from Manabush. I just like that. I like that name. And I think it's interesting that a UK vape liquid vendor has a Native American themed sort of uh, e-liquid, like Native American, you know, uh, imagery and art and names and stuff like that. Just, just really interesting to me. Uh, the Vapors. All right, well, this is basically a Kent build, so I'm not gonna rock this at 45 watts that I had it set before, but I'm not gonna go crazy. We're gonna, we're gonna set this at a modest 74 watts, just because it's easy to get to. Let's see the Vapors again. Yeah, okay. Okay, much better Vapors are happening. And I just really love these bottles. These bottles are awesome bottles. Yeah, okay, that does look very cool. That USV Arc with the Twisted Messes 24 Pro Series on there and the DHD tip that goes like black or white with purple and blue in it. That's just, that's a very cool looking setup. I'm really hoping that this juice just tastes delicious so I can kind of keep this setup going. But let's give it a shot here. Chiricahua from Manbush. It's not called Manbush. It's called Manabush. And I shouldn't keep calling it Manbush. That's just that's just funny though. That's just for comedy's sake. All right, enough talking. Let's just give it a try here. All right, so here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna sit back a little bit. I'm gonna vape some of this, and we're gonna come back and talk about it. Start the music now. So here's what I have to say about the Chiricahua. I want to read this Chiricahua Sun. Mild tobacco taste with an indefinable sweet nutty topping. Yeah, that's basically what I get out of this. It tastes like a tobacco, but I get a really strong, strong, like almost like an RY4 type of vape from this. It kind of tastes like caramel corn. Like it tastes like tobacco caramel corn to me. The 50-50 PGVG out of a big lung inhale RDA like the TM24 Pro, it's a little bit throaty. The first vape I took on it, I couldn't even focus on the flavor because it was so throaty. And I know that Dwayne constantly makes fun of me for throaty juices. Oh, it's throaty juice. Oh, is that a throaty mod? Oh, is that a throaty atomizer? Dynamite fuse, too throaty for Nick. But this is a 50-50 PGVG and it is 
legitimately a throaty, throaty juice. What I want to do is I want to put this juice in a tank. I want to tank this juice rather than drip this juice because a 50-50 PGVG, it's going to be a little bit less throaty inside of a tank, inside of a sub ohm tank than it is inside of this dripper. But apart from the throatiness, it really does taste like a rich tobacco and a, like a caramel popcorn type of situation. Yeah, it's a tobacco-y flavor, but I get a little bit of sweetness, and that little bit of sweetness tastes like a caramel popcorn. It tastes like tobacco, RY4, and caramel popcorn, which RY4 was a flavor way back in the day that I worshipped. I worshipped this flavor. It was a caramely, tobacco-y flavor, and I absolutely, absolutely worshipped this flavor, and I get a little hint. I get a little hint of that RY4-ness happening in here. It's good. This is a damn, damn good vape. This is a damn, damn, damn good vape. This is a little bit of an acquired taste, man. I don't think this is a juice that's going to appeal to a very wide range of people. This isn't like, you know, watermelon or like a, you know, like fruit punch or even some more of the simpler flavors. Like this isn't just like green apple or, or or blueberry. It's not a very simple flavor. This is a very complex flavor, and I think this is a little bit of an acquired taste, kind of like that Poet Sweet Black Tea that I absolutely have fallen in love with. I love that juice, but not everybody who tries it loves it. I've gotten, I mean, uh, I can't even count how many emails I've got that are like, you know, I tried that Sweet Black Tea on your recommendation, and it actually made me throw up. People just have different palates, and uh, it's just one of those things. I really like that juice, but I know that the sweet black tea isn't for everyone. I really enjoy this juice, but I have a feeling that this juice is not for everyone. But if you're looking for a rich, tobacco-y, caramely corn RY4 type of flavor, and you're in the UK, you can get TPD compliant bottles, and I'm assuming short fill bottles as well over there in the UK. So I'm going to put a link down in the description to where you can check out this juice if you're interested. But we got here, I'm going to say it correctly one last time, Chiricahue. Chiricahue son from Manabush, which I'm sure I'm not saying that correctly either. At the risk of repeating myself, tobacco RY4 caramel corn. That's what I get out of it. I'll put the links down in the description and let's wrap up this very random juice tasting. We're coming down. We're coming down to the end of the vlog here and it's time for what I believe to be everybody's favorite segment, favorite comments of the week. All right, so we got a couple of favorite comments of the week here. And once again, I want to give a big shout out to Nico in Finland for going through and screen capturing some favorite comments of the week for me. Your work is always appreciated, sir. First comment of the week coming here from uh, Mark, a fellow named Mark. He says, uh, I really dislike the rainbow finish. It looks like a petrol leak. I'm assuming you're British because you said petrol, but yes, nail on the head, that rainbowy finish that comes on mods if you're part of the rainbow people. And by rainbow people, I mean people that like the rainbow finish on mods. I am not a rainbow person. I don't like the rainbow finish on mods because it's the it reminds me of antifreeze. It reminds me of antifreeze leaking and sitting in the driveway. For some reason, in my driveway, growing up as a child, I remember seeing antifreeze like rainbow you know that rainbowy puddle that happens that's what it looks like nail on the head there mark nail on the head oh jader vapes you're so nice jader vapes left a comment and just said just remember nick i love you even if the audio sucks yeah uh, audio quality is really an important thing to me i really really like a good sounding video and when i came up here to shoot that traveling vlog when i came up here and brought a bunch of stuff and we did some vape mail the audio was terrible i can't even go back and watch that video because the audio just sounds so bad on it but jader vapes i appreciate the love even with the uh, even with the shitty audio got another comment <laughs> got another comment here from ian ian left a comment and said you can pronounce smoke however you'd like I pronounce it shit. <laughs> Here's the thing. I, I, uh, I'm not a big fan of smoke. I'm not a big fan of smoke products. Um, 
just not. Just not a big fan of them. I, I don't like using them. I don't feel like I get really good vapes from them. Um, smoke hasn't sent me anything in a very, very long time. I burned that bridge with smoke probably uh, years, years and years ago. Years and years and years ago, smoke has been around in the vape industry for a long, long time. And way back, I think it was 2012 or 2013, they used to send me stuff. I gave them some pretty negative reviews because they released a bunch of garbage. And since then, smoke hasn't really talked to me. And and that's fine because I don't really enjoy their products. I don't like the baby beast. I don't like the alien kits. I don't like their coil heads. I don't like their tanks and that's fine. And uh, apparently not a, a lot of other people like smoke either. And that's fine. That's fine. It's whatever. Here's the thing. That's the great thing about vaping. Just vape what you want to vape and enjoy what you want to enjoy. <laughs> Michael left a comment. It's just so weird. Michael left a comment and said, Snow Wolf, more like Smowerf. Why, what? <laughs> More like Smowerf. All right, that, that's cool. I don't know what that means, but that's cool. Got another comment of the week here from uh, Kid Bass. Kid Bass left a comment on one of the European travel vlogs, which Kent was featured heavily in. He said, more Kent next time. That's enough. We've had enough Kent. We, we need to have more other people. We need to have more Dwayne in these videos. And I know, look, I get it that we all love Kent and I love Kent and I love putting Kent in my videos. And honestly, editing Kent when he's in a video is, is one of the most enjoyable experiences ever because it's hilarious. So yes, we all love Kent. Don't worry, there will be more Kent coming up. Another comment of the week here. See, this one is, uh, this one's completely self-serving. I just chose this one because it makes me feel good and I would never personally make this comparison. But uh, this gentleman left a comment and said, Grim Green equals Philip DeFranco of the Vape Nation. So I'm taking that as a huge compliment because I love Philip DeFranco and I don't, I don't, I'm not trying to copy Philip DeFranco in any way. It's just that I respect him so much and I look up to Philip DeFranco so much as a YouTuber that getting a compliment of someone comparing you to someone that you look up to is a huge compliment. That is a huge motivational thing. I've kept this comment around just so every once in a while I can look at it and really feel motivated. Really feel motivated that somebody even made that comparison. And then the last final comment of the week, I'm not sure exactly what happened here, but I think a guy named Jordan wrote me a song. He wrote me a song in the form of a comment. I just need someone now to turn this into a song. But he wrote, dude, I totally miss you. I really fucking miss you. I'm all alone all the time, all the time. Dude, I totally miss you. The things we did together. Where have you gone? Totally miss the honesty and the special times and honesty. I totally miss the fucked up thing you do. I really fucking hope this goes for the next favorite comment of the week. P.S. I really did. And I don't know if that's a song, but Jordan, I'm here. I'm back. There's no need to miss me. I'm all over the internet. You, you could. There's a thousand Grim Green videos on my YouTube. There's there's uh, you know a thousand posts on my Instagram. There's plenty of Grim Green to go around. But thank you. Thank you for missing me. Feels good to be missed. Anyway, that's what I got for favorite comments of the week. And I think that's what I got for this vlog. Let me take one quick look around and make sure I didn't forget anything. But yeah, I think we're good. I think that's good. I think we're gonna call it good on this vlog. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. And I always say this every week, but everybody that makes it to the end of the vlog, you're literally my favorite people on earth. And if I ever meet you in real life, I owe you a hug or I also dispense crisp, high fives. But that's what I got, everybody. Thank you again so much for watching. I'm going to try to put links to everything that I talk about in the vlog down in the description below. I sometimes miss a few things here and there, so I apologize, but I try to put all of the links to everything I talk about down in the description, as well as all the links to all of my social media. If you want to follow me on Twitter, that would be great. If you want to follow me on Instagram, that would be great. Put all my social media links as well as my Patreon down in the description of this video. Okay, one last time. That's what I got for today, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, yeah, let's keep on vaping.